Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we are continuing our journey on building our basic dice game app. This is for the AP Computer Science Principles, Big Idea 3, Algorithms and Programming. Topic 3.1, as you can see here, variables. So you can see here's where we started. For variables, we're simply gonna focus on die one and die two, which are our dice. We've designed this in the previous video. And in this video, we're gonna do the very simple basics to code. We're gonna add some variables in here and we're gonna code our variables. So when we click on this button, roll them, these two labels are going to change. Now don't get caught up on having labels here. As we move on to 3.2, we're actually going to change these labels and make them images. Then we go to 3.3, we're gonna, which is, which is mathematical expressions. We're going to update the current sum. So our basic dice game is gonna cover 3.1, which is variables, all the way to 3.7, which is nested conditionals for AP computer science principles. At the end of unit 3.7, we'll have a full-fledged basic dice game. All right, so let's continue. So we've got all the stuff here. Now we need to code. Let's just go to blocks. And this unit 3.1 is all about variables. So let's actually go back to it. And you can see how can you store data in a program to solve problems? Well, we're gonna need to store if we're constantly playing, we need to need to score the values for die one and die two constantly so we can continue to play the game. If you look further, to find specific solutions to generalizable problems, programmers represent organized data in multiple ways. You can see represent a value in a variable. We are going to do that here. We're going to have three variables actually. And you can see here a variable is an abstraction inside of a program that can hold a value. Each variable has associated data storage that represents one value at a time, but the value can be a list or other collections that in turn contains multiple values. You can see also here, you can read through these, make sure you do on the class page. This is what you're responsible for on the AP multiple choice exam at the end of the year. Here's the other thing, determine the value of a variable as a result of an assignment. So these are the kind of questions that you can see, and we've covered those in AP Classroom. So for this, we're gonna need three variables and that's what we're going to create. So we've done this before, we've actually done it all year. We're gonna make variables by coming over here to variables. I click on variables, I'm gonna pull out and I, I'm gonna need three of them. So I'm gonna say die is zero. We'll make another one, die two. is zero and current role and zero. So we've learned how to play basic dice in our unplugged activity. This is what we did before we actually started designing. So I gave you the unplugged activity worksheet and you can see here, I gave you the, the rules of dice. I took you through some simulations and then you actually use this web interface to roll and try to simulate playing a game of dice. And again, you kept track of your stuff and then you turn that in the class page. So all these rules, again, we have to keep track of the first roll and current rolls and 7-11, we're gonna do all this stuff in our game. But for now, for 3.1 variables, we need to keep track of whatever role die one is, die two, and the current roles. That's what we're gonna update here. So we have that. Now, whenever we press roll them, I want the game to actually play. So let's actually program that. So I have button roll them. When it is clicked, which means it's touched, what I want to do is I want to play the game. Well, a part of the AP Computer Science Create Performance task, remember you have to make procedures, your own procedures. So let's make a procedure for this. 
click on procedures. I'm going to pull this out and let's call it roll dice. Whatever I put in here is actually hidden from this, this button. When someone presses roll them, I don't care of all the details that are inside of here. I just want to actually perform that. So that is actually what abstraction is, is hiding all the details that you don't need at the time. So I'm going to pull this in here. And inside of here, anything I put in here is abstracted away or hidden away when in, inside of here. All right, so what are we doing? We have this and this. We want to update. These are labels. And we simply want to get a random number. Well, die, these guys here, dice, have a value between 1 and 6. So we want to get a random number between 1 and 6. And then we want to update these two displays. So when we get a random number, we're going to save it in our variable. Die 1, die 2. And also when we roll the die, we want to make sure that we update the current roll because it's not always going to be zero. So if I roll once, it's just a roll one. And then I roll again, it's just a two, then three, then four, then five. So let's kind of just make our plan of action here. So first, what are we going to do? We're going to randomly generate die one, which is one through six. Let's just say value of one of one to six. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for die two. Two. Actually, I'm gonna say randomly generate die one and die two values are one through six so each die has a value between one to six other thing we want to do is next thing we want to do is update the labels for die one and die two third thing we want to do is update our current role by adding one and then let's say update the current role label and that's pretty much it that's all we're doing right now in this part because again we're only dealing with their roles so let's go ahead and knock this out part one let's generate those random variables first I'm going to want to change a value one of the good things about variables is you can overwrite this value. Right now it's zero, but we can change it. So I'm gonna mouse over and I can, this is to get the current value, this is to set the value. So I wanna change it, I'm gonna do set. I'm gonna do the same thing for die two. I'm gonna pull this here. So I wanna generate a random number between one and six. Well, Numbers and random come from a subject. Do you see a subject over here, left side? Well, math is a subject. So let's click on math. And do you see anything here that can randomly generate a number between one to six? Anything? If you look right here, random integer one to 100. Now we want one to six. We can change this though, so I'm going to pull this out, go back to math, pull this out again, and now I have from 1 to 100, I simply want to make it 1 to 6. So that is step one, randomly generate values. Well, what happens if I press roll them? Will this change? Let's see. nothing's happening well my button is calling roll it's randomly generating these but why is nothing happening well if you think about it we did not do step two these are labels this is a label and this is a label we need to update this property with that new value 
that is being generated. We're generating random numbers. We're just not updating the values here. So this is text for label two and label one, same difference. It's a property. Remember in MIT App Inventor, the properties blocks are the green blocks. All I want to do is simply update this property called text. So I'm going to go to LBL die one. You can see you have a light green one. That means you want to get what the current text is. You have a dark green one. It says set next to it. That means you want to change it. I want to change this so I can add the new number. I just want to pull in set. And I'm going to go ahead to die two and I'm going to pull in that as well. Now, this says die one, seven, die two, three. If I just put the variables in here, I'm going to lose that first part. And let me show you that. So I'm going to just now, instead of going set, I want to get die one. I'm going to put that, my variable in there. I'm going to go to die two. I'm going to get my variable and put that in here. So now it says die one, die two, die one was seven, die two was three. If I just put the numbers in here, I'm gonna leave, lose the first part, which is die one with a semicolon. So you'll see. So you can see six, five. So these are random numbers between one and six, but that doesn't look right. We want it to look like this, die one and die two. And again, don't worry about the text. We are gonna change this for images. We're gonna do that in the next section, which is 3.2 data extraction. But for now, since we're only focusing on variables in 3.1, we are just using labels. So I want it to look like this, die one with the value, die two with the value. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna to go to join. I'm going to put my number in the second. I'm going to go back to text. I'm going to pull this and put this in there. And I'll say die one with a semicolon. I'll duplicate that same process. I'll go to text. I'll put in join. I'll put die two in the second. I'll go to text. I'll pull this in. And I'll do die two with a semicolon. So now, instead of having like just some random numbers on the table, you can see that is working. Now, three and four, we want to update the current role. Current role right here is zero. It's never changing. We have this variable here called current role. So anytime someone presses role die, we want to add to the current role. So I'm going to do current role. And add comes from the subject called math. So I'm going to click on math on the left side, pull this in here, and I want to add one to it. So I'm going to go to math again. I'll pull in my zero, change this to one. Well, what am I adding one to? I want to add one to the current role. So this is my current role. I use this one to change it. Well, if I wanted to add one to my current role, I need to get my current role, whatever it is, and put that here. So don't get confused by this. This is saying change current role to the current role plus one. If my current role is zero, plus one becomes one. If my current role is one, plus one, current role becomes two. That's what this statement is saying. So let's see. What happens if I press this now? Will it work? It didn't. Why don't you think it worked? Again, this is just a variable. Make sure you're displaying the variable. If we go back to design, here, this is the label. I have to add my variable to update my label. So I'm going to find my Label current role. I'm going to pull in my text. I want to do a join statement so I don't lose it. But let me just show you, like if I get my current role now, it's probably going to be three because I pressed it two times. 
before you can see and I don't want that number there so again I want to add a join statement before that so I'm gonna come up to text put in my join put it here put a text before that join and this will say current role with a semicolon so there we go so you can see the current role moves up you can see that let's refresh it so you can see we'll start at zero so i'm going to refresh the companion screen current role is zero die is seven die two is three i'm going to press this all these are now working this has been the video on how to use variables, which is a part of Big Idea 3, Algorithms and Programming, Topic 3.1, Variables. For the next couple videos, we're going to go from 3.1 to 3.7 to complete this entire game. We're going to have money, we're going to have sound, we're going to have images, and all those things. For now, we are done with 3.1 variables. Go ahead and move to the next video.